Howdy. Today we're looking at the Sinoid Gamma Core Incarnon, as per a request from one of the viewers. Specifically post J Shadows, because I think I did a video on this uh, before J Shadows. Yeah, yeah, I did, I did, I did. But things are different now because of the armor and the stats changes, specifically to magnetic. That does make a pretty big difference. Now, first we'll go over the stats. I, no, 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 the evolutions, I guess, because that makes the biggest difference. Because we really aren't going to be using the Incarnon form. It's kind of doo-doo for killing stuff. So the Incarnon form makes it so you shoot a projectile that has a delayed explosion with forced cold procs. It's very similar to the Gorgon Incarnon, but significantly worse. The first evolution has two options. Sage's Resolve, which is 10 base damage and 25% multi-shot while channeled ability is active. Kind of horrible. The other option is Infused Shots, 6 base damage, and on 50 energy spent, increase base damage by plus 5 for 10 seconds, stacking up to 4 times. That ends up being 20 base damage increase, which, with this evolution already getting plus 6, the beam's base damage is 27. That's a big damage buff. We're getting nearly an 80% damage buff just by casting our abilities, which is huge. Then we have the third tree. Evolved Autoloader for 50% reload speed when holstered, or magazine reloaded when holstered. That's pretty horrible. I don't care for that unless you're using it for priming with the beam specifically, but at that point, new core is better. Moonrise Velocity for plus 8 beam range, though you can fix this by just putting on the Exilus mod for beam range, but even then, I think the base beam range on the weapon is more than fine. Or Extended Volley for increased base mag capacity of 40. The base mag is 80, so this brings up by 50% to 120. That doesn't do anything for the Incarnon mode. None of these do anything for the Incarnon mode. So I just go with Extended Volley because a bigger mag is always nice. Then the fourth in, uh, perk in the Evolution Tree Critical Parallel for 10% base crit chance and a 0.2 base crit multiplier. Survivor's Edge for 6% base crit chance and 6% base status chance. Or Elemental Balance for 10% base status chance. Critical Parallel is the best in my opinion. It's very, very schnazzy and will massively bring up our damage. So I would definitely, definitely recommend going with this. Now, the stats here, it doesn't even reflect the stats here with the evolution unless we, like, go here. So, the stats on the beam weapon itself, once we have all of these things on it, is 12 fire rate, 120 mag size, 1.8 second reload speed, which is very nice reload speed for how big the mag is. 30% crit chance, 2.2 crit multiplier, 28% status, and 27 damage being magnetic at base and purely magnetic. Now... These are the Incarnate form stats down here, but they're pretty horrible, so again, we're not really going to be focusing on the Incarnate mode. We just want the Incarnate here because it gives us better stats. Now, the weapon itself, let's go ahead and show it, sort of. This is, oh wow, you can't even, like, see what's going on because my Hildren's shoulder plates are so freaking massive. Let us, there we go, nothing affecting our damage. So, this is the weapon. Shoots a beam. Sounds really cool. It has no base punch through, I don't think. And it has no AoE. It's just a purely beam weapon. Just a laser beam. The Incarnate form, if you want to know what it is, let's come over here, build it up. You gotta get headshots. Again, very similar to the Gorgon Incarnate, though it has worse velocity. You can see it arcs down pretty hard. It has a long delay. It does pull enemies in from about 8 meters, I want to say. Which isn't a lot. That's a pretty small suck. But it does have the forced cold proc. It is one forced cold proc, so you can see we get more than one because of our multi-shot. It should be one forced cold proc. Actually, with our multi-shot, wait, wait, wait. It might be two forced cold procs. I don't know. I forgot what mods I have on it, so we'll see it in a second. But we mostly just want to use the normal fire mode. Now, this weapon is mostly good because it has base magnetic on it. Now, you could go for magnetic on a different weapon, like the new core. It's not hard, 
but this already has it, so that's what we're going to make use of. On top of that, because it's the cyanoid version, the syndicate version of the weapon, we get the entropy effect. Gain affinity to fill the Cephalon pseudometer and trigger 25 meter magnetic explosion, restoring 25% energy and increasing energy max by plus 25% for 30 seconds. Now, you, it cannot re-trigger while it's active, but it will trigger almost instantly once it's no longer active. So every 30 seconds, you're almost always going to have it trigger instantly, giving you 25% of your max energy back and giving you 25% higher energy cap, which is pretty nice. This thing can generate energy for you. So it's got some level of, uh, what's the word here? I don't know, some usability, uh, utility. That's the word I'm looking for. It's got some nice utility effect to it. This is not the build I want. This is a magnetic build or a gas build. It doesn't really work. I can show it, I suppose. Here we have no companion and as I showed earlier, nothing is affecting our damage on our Warframe. I do want to switch to Uneru though for if I need to armor ship. That's going to make getting the first kill much, much easier. So we'll reset these enemies, come over here and this is without any of our stacks built up. I'll go over the mods and it's like I should have done that before coming over here to kill this guy. Armor strip him because he's not dying at all. There we go. Now we have some level of stacks. You can see it's still not doing a lot. Gas does not really work on this weapon because it doesn't have high base damage. The main reason I had gas on it from earlier was to test it with the Incarnon form which I'll show in just a second here. Let me build my stacks back up. There we go. So with max stacks here, it does some level of damage, but more importantly, the incarnate form. I wanted it to sort of like do damage because it has the grouping with it, so the gas clouds overlap. If armor strip was involved or viral damage, I think it would work. You can see it's not horrible but there's better options here though if you want you can make it work anyways let's go back to the build i want to show pure electric really this is what we had for the gas build pistol elementalist primed versions of target cracker pistol gambit and heated charge galvanized shot which is additive on this weapon amalgam barrel diffusion which is actually worse than galvanized diffusion though i don't have galvanized diffusion maxed and i like to use this for the extra dot speed lethal torrent pistol pestilence and secondary deadhead pretty straightforward gas build now let's change this up instead of what we have on it right now so we're going to let me think here for a second i want pure electric so we replace this then we come over here and we replace this with jolts there we go not much has changed but now we have a electric magnetic damage build and we can still proc deadhead galvanized shot even though it's additive is still very nice here because of the status chance which means we get more electric procs which means we have higher damage so it still ends up being a very nice increase in damage I'm so bad at getting headshots with this thing. It's already doing significantly better than the gas damage was. Which, I mean, makes sense, seeing as it's a beam weapon. It's kind of like a mini Quanta Vandal, I suppose, when you build it for electric like this. This is without armor strip, and this is without viral, and we aren't even like getting any sort of priming with more status effects for more damage from Gal my shot. All things considered, it's not terrible, but I was really hoping it would do better. The main problem actually is that it has magnetic. The problem is that because magnetic is on it, which caps out on our status effect, we're wasting tons and tons of status procs, which could just be more electric procs if we didn't have magnetic in the way. Then if you want to see, here it is with the Incarnate form, just like spamming it out doesn't really do much <laughs> pretty worthless so let's come back into here now this thing can kill right like I showed that it was doing damage but really 
it's meant to be a utility weapon. But I do want to show it, before I get to that, I want to show it with Viral Electric. If you don't feel like getting electric from another source. Simulate. Now we do have the problem of less electric clocks in general and that Viral and Magnetic do cap out. Just like Magnetic was, so now we have two status procs that are capping out. It's still higher damage, but... Viral isn't hard to get from another source, though if you aren't getting viral from like Nourish or your pet or something, then I suppose this would be the better option. It's totally dependent on what you're running in your overall build though. Here and then again, we'll do this. Just sort of spam a few shots so you can see that this build struggles with the Incarnon form. Now what makes this so good? is the magnetic for Eximus. That's why we like magnetic. So actually, no, we can use this exact build, but just switch the enemies. Now, now, we spawn in these guys again, but as Eximus enemies. Now, if you didn't know, magnetic damage now affects damage to overguard as well as shields. On top of that, based on how many magnetic procs are on the enemy when you break overguard, it will spread an electric proc like force electric proc and damage in an AoE when you break the overguard. You can see it kind of did. But once we build up our stacks, we're going to be able to start melting these guys in their overguard. Which is what I want. There we go. Now look at this. You can just sort of like melt all their overguard and then let the electric fox do their work killing everything we don't even need to shoot them after their overguard breaks for them to die or at least most of the time Ooh, it got them all to one hp over here fairly low it's really good for destroying overguard now, if you want a beam weapon just to kill stuff in your secondary slot, I think there's much better options. But instead, I like to use this for priming with secondary fortifier, right? So we add in secondary fortifier into here. Gain one overguard for every 100 damage dealt to enemies with overguard. And you deal 8 times damage to overguard. That's a lot of damage bonus. So now we have magnetic and viral. We don't need the electric here anymore, though it does increase our damage, I suppose, in general. But if you want a different element instead of electric, you can. I don't I, I don't really think heat's needed, unless you want to use heat here so you can do like heat inherit. So I suppose it's entirely up to you. But now we can easily destroy Overguard near instantly, while also putting a bunch of viral magnetic procs on the enemy in general. Look at that. The overguard got eviscerated. Let me murder this guy so I can get the stacks building up. Wait a second, I don't have deadhead anymore. Never mind, there are no stacks to be had. You can also use the incarnate form. It won't suck stuff in because of the overguard. But it will easily break their overguard. Or at least if they're close enough to the center of the explosion to have a decent amount of damage done. And now they can all be pulled in and primed. This is a pretty fun weapon, and it's pretty decent too, I'd say, overall. It's kind of in between when compared to other stuff like the new core, because the new core is a primer, but it can't really kill stuff with a primer build unless you have outside buffs, like on your Warframe. And there are better weapon beam weapons for killing stuff, like I would just go with a Psychron instead if I wanted pure killing power, or hell even what is it the gaze on the secondary kick guns but this is like a nice in between that also has the grouping of force cold procs of the incarnon if you want to use that and being able to use it with the magnetic and secondary fortifier just lets you run around and pulverize overguard while also building your own overguard since secondary fortifier steals it and gives it to yourself it ends up being very, very nice to run around and use. I like to use this a lot in tandem with Atlas, specifically. Where's Atlas? Because I can destroy their overguard while also putting viral on them, so I do big PP damage with my punches, and then I also get overguard to get more survivability. I think it just works really well with him. 
and it can work well with a lot of other frames. I think that's mostly it for the Sinoid Gamma Core. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Well, uh, you know what? I guess we can do heat damage. Let me make sure nothing on this. Yeah, we gotta switch back to Trinity. Because I think that's the only other real status effect that is worth using on this weapon, generally speaking. You could go corrosive, but I don't think that's worth it at all, to be honest. So let's switch to Prime T to Charge and Scorch. This is without any viral. And instead of Deadhead, you would run Cascadia Flare. Now, ooh, e, I, e, ooh. If we replace Pistol Elements and Galvanize Shot, we could get Viral, but I, I, I don't like running Viral, Heat, and Magnetic. That's just very rough. And I know Galvanize Shot is going to be additive here with Cascadia Flare, but it's still nice to have because of the status chance. The 80% status chance is just going to give us a lot higher heat damage generally because we get much more procs so it's still worth having in my opinion so let's reset these guys and change them back to not Eximus real quick take them out add these guys in and actually hang on a second I'm gonna switch to mag you can see nothing affecting our damage unless I cast an ability because I want to show it with nourish and the strength on this build is 144 right now, so Nourish gives 64% viral. So I'll show that in a second, since I know a lot of people do that. But first, pure heat procs. Builds up with Cascadia Flare. It's got some pretty hefty heat damage. There are much better weapons for heat, especially beam weapons. I mean, you've got Furs and Karnon, as far as in Karnon weapons go. First and Karnon is significantly stronger for just purely melting enemies with an ungodly amount of heat procs. Here is the in Karnon mode. You can see that it's still not really doing much. We have Blast because of the heat mix with the cold, so we can't actually get heat procs now. Now let's us come back over here, reset these guys. And then show it with some level of viral damage involved. It's still going to kill these guys faster than without viral. But we are going to be getting much less heat procs. But it's got some pretty good damage. As soon as the heat proc ticks the first time, assuming you're getting like headshots, they're just going to die outright to that first tick of heat proc. Right, so like shooting... Wait a second. Shooting him in the face and he dies. Shooting him in the face and it procs and he dies. And then we'll do the same thing again with the Incarnon mode. Like so, still doesn't matter because, well, Blast is proccing instead of Heat, which is a sad face. You'd have to mix, mix. <laughs> you'd have to mix the cold with something else to try to get Heat on the explosion, and I don't think that's really worth it. That's gonna pretty much do it though for the Sinoid Gamma Core Post Jade Shadows. I think its best use is definitely for priming and shredding overguard and building overguard for yourself via secondary fortifier. So, you know, give it a shot, give it a try. It's a pretty schnazzy weapon and I really like using it because it's fun and it sounds cool and it looks badass. That's it. Adios.